What's up, Tejas? It's National Clean Out Your Medicine Cabinet Day. So I had no idea that that was a day. And so today I'm gonna show you inside of my medicine cabinet and maybe do a little bit of cleaning up. So uh, let's check it out. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, I never really use my medicine cabinet and I don't ever really get sick or anything. So um, it's kind of boring. I guess that's a good thing. That's a good problem to have. But anyway, um, I'm definitely gonna need this because I went to my brother's house one time and I was having, like, we had a bonfire. He lives like out in the country and I got bit by some sugars. Like, they are terrible. So I got this and then I got this, which was really helpful, but I don't know if that has ever happened to y'all, but it is so terrible. My legs looked horrible and then it was super itchy. It was the worst feeling ever. Well, I'm sure there's worse, but uh, this looks like it can be thrown away. I was thinking about that. Vitamin E is good for you, as long as it's not expired. Oh yeah, this, can y'all see this? 2019, Ooh. yeah, that's going to trash. Castor oil, oh, it's also expired. Where's that? 2019, obviously I haven't looked in here in a while. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's good. That's so I can exfoliate. Oh, just kidding. Okay. Oh, I need that. It's for my waterproof mascara. Actually, I'll probably take that. I'm going to the pool this weekend. Okay. Um, I don't know about this expiring. Have y'all ever used this liquid bandage? It's amazing. Yeah. Maybe this is a good, good national day for me. I guess I can throw this away because it's pretty much empty. What is this? Oh, more oil. Truffle oil. I forgot I had that. Yes. Okay. Anyway, I forgot what I was saying. Okay. Oh, I always get eye infections for some. Oh, it expired. Never mind. Throwing that away. I guess like my contacts, I just like leave them in too long or something. A Theraflu. Okay. I like Theraflu, it tastes good. But just an FYI, don't ever take too much Theraflu. Like if you OD on Theraflu, your your nose will start bleeding. I had like a lot of nose bleeds. Oh, 420. I wonder if these are really exciting. That's like so much. I'm gonna just save those because I do have allergic reactions, but I'll buy some new ones. Like, but I'm just gonna save it for now. Like just in case. It's better than having nothing. Okay. Oh, look, my friend gave me this at a bachelorette party. It's dehydration relief. Actually, I should probably take that this weekend too. Okay, um, what else do we have here? That's my sharpener for my eye thing. Oh, pain relief. This is for uh, when I get a hangover. Actually, I should probably take that too. Okay, a little pumice. Some more cough medicine. This is one of my faves. Let me put it up here though. All right, more eye infection medicine. You guys, I got an eye infection from some fake eyelashes one time. Like I got eyelash extensions. Oh my God, it was terrible. So for all you ladies that are able to wear eyelash extensions all the time, kudos to y'all. I just get the falsies which can also give you eye infections. Okay, I have my thermometer. I got this when I think I got COVID last year. Oh, and my replacement hoods for my toothbrush. Okay, well, um, I feel like we did a lot of cleaning out here. Like, this is good. I feel like I've been productive. So, I'm gonna put all my bug bite stuff at the top and my cough medicine at the top. How cute, it's like, fixed. I need to put this the other way though so we know what that is. I used to work at a store so you know I know all about that facing making sure that everything's faced out you can see it all nice and neat. Um yeah I should put like all my face stuff on one side so like over there. That's smart. I'm a smart girl. I feel like I'm breathing really hard. Sorry. All right, y'all, um, I feel like we did a good job. Like here's, um, you know, I'm throwing all of this away right here. 
So, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, I feel like it was a productive national clean out your medicine cabinet day. And I hope that y'all take the time to do a little cleaning yourself. Because I'm pretty sure it's not good like to be using expired items. And I know that I don't throw stuff away. I'm maybe like some might say I'm a semi hoarder, but I'm not like those people on hoarders. So just saying. But anyway, let us know like the weirdest thing that you find in your medicine cabinet. I guess like my weirdest thing. I mean, I don't really have anything weird. Did I have anything weird, you guys? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, well, if you don't have a weird thing like me, then let us know what is the oldest thing that you have in your medicine cabinet. Mine was from 2018, so let me know what's the oldest thing that you found in there and what it was, if you want to, because it might be something you don't want to tell me. But um, mine was the... What's up, Tejas? I'm here today in Spring, Texas at Blue Buffalo Mercantile with the co-owners, Tara Rabel and Heather Malik. So thanks for having us. Thanks, thanks for being here. here. We yeah. appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, um, I, you know, y'all have two um, locations or they're like right next door neighbors to each other and y'all yes. have some amazing stuff. So if y'all haven't been here, y'all need to definitely check it out. But I wanted to know, um, first of all, what's y'all's story? Like, how did y'all get started and how did y'all meet each other? Um, you know, why did, why did y'all want to start this whole idea? Yeah. So I am originally from Wyoming. Heather is a Texan. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. I've been here <laughs> for seven years now, and um, I came to Old Town Spring and saw that there was a vendor market here, and so I started out with a really small space, the size of a cabinet, um, and then I started looking for vendors for that store, and Heather happened to be. Um, in the field for a show and so I was like you need to come rent a space and so she ended up coming <laughs> into that store um, and then for a while I was just like okay we need to do this so we had talked about I guess three years ago um, doing our own business and um, we I left that store last year so 2020 and then we opened this location in May. Oh awesome. Yes. So, and then did you have something to add? Sorry. Oh, well, I quit my full-time job. Oh, wow. Um, yes, this is leap of faith. <laughs> you just feel like <laughs> huge leap of faith. Um, but uh, Tara and I, we've been wanting to do this for forever. Um, and just, it was kind of like timing. It was like fate. We just kind of jumped in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have to do that. Like you have mm -hmm. this idea and it's like a little scary to yes. really, you know, take mm -hmm. that first step. So. It's something we've both been wanting to do for a long time and we've just kind of we met and we had the kind of same goals and we just like we had the same drive and we're like well, let's go let's do it yeah so we did it and here we are yeah. <laughs> we're <Yeah>. still here <laughs> so in 2019 we wanted to get our name out there so we created our business in january and then we did shows that whole year which was a lot of work um and went around the whole houston area um to like festivals yes. and okay. yes, holiday yeah. shows and everything. Mm -hmm. so. And their markets and different things like that. And then we decided, okay, we need to get a storefront. And because we were both already here in Old Town Spring, we wanted to keep all the clientele that was already coming. Um, we looked in several other spots. We looked for like six months hardcore. <laughs> Yes. Um, and decided that this is where we needed to stay. Yeah, yeah, and it's a really great spot. So I wanted to know a little bit about like what kind of products do you offer? Um, and then also, you know, if there's something that makes y'all unique where people want to come to your store versus another boutique. So we carry a lot of different items, um, as you guys can see, like um, women's apparel, accessories, children's apparel, we have men's apparel, we have men's accessories, like kitchen, home, decor, like it's like endless. So like we kind of carry a little bit of everything for anybody or whatever you're looking for as far as a gift, like we've got it all. <laughs> and then things that stand out that would make us special, I think they all make us special. But <laughs> So, um, but we are also a vendor market and sometimes I feel that that's kind of what makes us special. So we support other small businesses to give them an opportunity to have a place to sell their merchandise because um, it's hard just yeah. to just 
one small business to have their own business. And so um, we're a business full of businesses. So we, we buy wholesale from small businesses and we support small businesses to sell their stuff in our stores and then our small business sells in here as well. So it's a... Uh, yeah, I think that's something that makes us unique. Um, a lot of boutiques, a lot of small businesses purchase things wholesale from large companies. Mm -hmm. Heather and I try to focus on doing small businesses. A lot of our stuff does not come from China. A lot of it is made buy another small business, which mm -hmm. yes, it's more expensive. We pay more yeah. and the consumer pays more, but you are supporting a family. You're yeah. not supporting a large company. So oh, I yes. think that's what really makes us stand out. And the fact that we are constantly changing what we carry, we do not carry the same thing all the time. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I really love that. And it's like unique things that you aren't going to find if you go to the mall or something like that, which I love. So. Do y'all also sell stuff online? Yes, our website is bluebuffalomercantile.com and we also sell stuff on Instagram and Facebook. We have people who ask us to be invoiced and we send invoices. Oh, nice. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So we'll make sure that we drop their information down below so that y'all can go shopping. Um, <laughs> and also, um, who's the person that chooses the products? Do y'all do that together or is do one of y'all have like that special talent for choosing? Because I don't think I could really choose. We it's both of us. Yeah, we're both sure. kind of on the same page. We know what each other like and look for and what requirements, what standards we look for for products in these stores. And so we, we know where to go. <laughs> yeah, and we both definitely choose our vendors. Mm -hmm. um, we're pretty picky about who we allow to come into our store. Um, one, we, they need to have good products. Two, they need to work their business well. Um, so we definitely choose them together, who we have in our store. And it has to go with the way that our store looks because right. when you walk yeah. into our store, it doesn't look like a vendor market where it has rows or aisles or cabinets. Everything is blended. So if you were to walk in here, you wouldn't realize that there's 10 other businesses in yeah. one yeah. building. Yeah. And so, um, you know, y'all are talking about collaborating with these business owners, um, small business owners and selling their products, but are there other ways that um, you've joined forces with uh, local organizations or statewide organizations where maybe you, um, you know, you might sponsor an event or you are part of a chamber of commerce or something like that? Um, we have, uh, like, we've donated items to silent auctions and things like that through the area, um, back in her hometown in Wyoming. Like, we try and get out there and, and help when we can. Um, we're, I don't feel like we're able to do the sponsorships of, like, the whole show or an event or thing yet, but we do what we can. Um, and, and silent auction items go over really well with some of the kind of baskets we put together. So, we um, did um, sponsor, sp a sponsorship for the um, Klein 4-H. We did. Uh-huh. Yeah. The first year. Oh, and yes, then we sorry. also sponsored a swim team. <laughs> so it's the smaller, which we're trying to. But yeah, because I think like for a small town, it's always you know like there's just always so many opportunities to um, yes. you know give back to the community. Yes. So. And we try and collaborate with our neighbors here in the town to um, to have events. We try and do a sip and shop once a month where uh, we coordinate uh, food trucks and things. To so y'all actually coordinate. Yes. Oh, uh, wow. we, we do a lot of research on what food trucks can come out and how what do we pair them with. And, and then we try to promote through social media to get a crowd out here and just encourage shopping and sipping and having fun. Oh, so, that's so awesome. Yes. So we try and support those small businesses and make sure that they get enough uh, business out here so that they have a profitable day as well. So. Yeah, and so I know that this area is kind of touristy mm -hmm. too, so do you get most of your um, like customers that they're locals or are there more tourists or like kind of a mix of those? I'd say it's a good mix. I would say it's a good yeah. mix and depending on the time of year. Mm -hmm. um, I would. I would say like Houston area would mm. probably be the most. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say just spring. Mm -hmm. Like we have a lot of people that come from south and Katy and up north. Right. Not really necessarily the spring area. They always tell me that like they're so close and I forget about it. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> Old Town Spring is definitely a destination. It is. Um, so you have a lot of the groups that come out on the weekends or like the girls going to have lunch for the day and they come shopping. Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely, I'm going to have to come back <laughs> when I have the full day to just do it all. And I probably have to get like a hotel or something. So, <laughs> so, so you can do our sip and shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Starting your own business can be really difficult. And mm -hmm. was there um, a certain 
obstacle that y'all overcame or that y'all had to deal with and how did y'all overcome that? COVID. Yeah. <laughs> um, we signed our lease at the beginning of March and a week later is when the country shut down. Mm. So we were kind of in panic mode, like what did we do? Like, um, okay, right. <laughs> let's just see what's our game plan now. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, so that definitely, and then we were ready to start our business and we, we had to stay closed for three months. Yeah. So did y'all um, pivot and were y'all able to sell like online exclusively or? We always have and we've always sold online. Um, but at that time, a lot of people weren't spending money either mm -hmm. because so many people were losing their jobs. Yeah. And so it just hurt everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody knew what the future was going to hold. We didn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, but basically we got a good opportunity to work on our building next door so that we basically scraped and sanded that sucker down. We had three months to work on it and it was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot By of blood, hand. sweat, and tears yeah. in that building. <laughs> like, I we believe it. appreciate it a lot. <laughs> so, I believe it. Put some sweat equity in. <laughs> so how did you stay motivated during that time? Well, a lot of it comes back to I left the store that I was in, which was my primary income, and Heather quitting her full-time job. We really didn't have a choice. Yeah. I mean, this is something we're so passionate about. Yeah, it was going to work. We, yeah, we're going to make it work. And, work. and we tell ourselves that every day, and we're like, well, we're not ready for quite right yet to have a new building, but if we don't act now, it won't be there when we're ready. So yeah. it's all about that comfort zone and jumping outside of it. Yeah. <laughs> Another leap of faith. Like, yes. we aren't quite ready, but if we don't take it, it's going to be taken, especially in Old Town Spring. Property goes really fast. Yeah. Um, so we're like, well, let's do it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. I really like that because I think that for people that are watching and they're kind of thinking, like, do I do I do this? Like, mm -hmm. I'm scared. Like, it just is really inspiring to hear y'all's story. Yeah. So. I feel like I waited way too long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did too. I've been wanting to do it since high school. Oh, wow. All my business plans were of a boutique. Um, and I moved around so much and finally I felt settled here. And then, of course, meeting Heather, I'm like, okay, well... This is the time to do it. And we are both moms, so yeah. it definitely <laughs> helps out having a partner mm -hmm. um, to where yes. if you need to go do something with your kids, you can. Doing it all by yourself and having both these buildings would be really yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and then my last question is, is there a secret to um, starting your own business that you want to share with our viewers that you wish that maybe somebody had shared with you before? Then like, just to start, stop waiting, stop thinking about it. Just start somewhere, just start. <laughs> because you yeah. can think it to death if you'd like to. Because we did, or I did for several oh. years. And then jumping it's in scary. by myself was so scary. And then when I was like, I found someone with similar path driven like ideas, I was like, it was more comforting, but not everybody's gonna find that. Yeah. So, um, but it we make a great easy. team. No, yes, it's we not. Do. It is not easy and we have had a lot of, we have sacrificed a lot to mm. get to where we are today and we're only going to continue to grow, Yeah, um, which is exciting and scary all at the same time. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, you don't get sleep, you miss out on things, but yeah. it's now starting to turn around to where we are sleeping more than three hours a <laughs> night and we're getting to do things with our family. Um, so hopefully it just gets better from there. Don't be scared. <laughs> so there's questions on these um, horseshoes in here. You just choose, you're going to choose three, but you can go ahead and choose your first one. Read it out loud and then y'all can both answer. <laughs> Do you know the Texas two-step? Show us. No. <laughs> I probably should. I'm from Wyoming, not Texas. So I guess is there a specific one? I don't know. Do you know it? The Texas two-step? Yeah, it's yeah. probably like a normal two-step, but they added Texas to it, maybe? Yeah, I, oh, I think I just it, thought I don't that, know. Yeah. Well, I, we, yeah. So <laughs> I just call it the two-step, because yeah, two I'm step. from Texas, so oh, I just okay. call it the two-step. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah. um, I don't get to dance as much as I used to, <laughs> but I love the two-step. But I'm not demonstrating that. Yeah, I like to two-step with a nail, like isn't it a two-parter thing? Well, we got our camera guys. <laughs> I don't know if they know how to two-step. Right. <laughs> So what is the largest ranch in Texas? Would that be the King Ranch? That's what I, yeah. Okay, I was like, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. It's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and your last one. Oh, right here. There's three. <laughs> Describe the attitude of Texas. Oh, you should be able to do this very well. 
Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever met people who are more prideful of their state. You are so proud Very people. proud. Oh yeah. I love it. I do. I'm not from here again, but I do love it. Um, good people. It's, yeah. a, it's a sense of pride, like to where you're from and right. the community and the events that we have and that make us Texas. That just, just the things that we have, you know, from Bluebell ice cream to Waterburger to all those landmark things, the Dr. Pepper, like and Bluebell, right. Blue, Bluebell, Blue Bonnets, sorry. <laughs> um, but all those things that just makes Texas, Texas. And you can't, you can't always get them everywhere else. No, but and not just, every state is like that either. No, yeah. so, but we're very proud of our, our items and our heritage and all that good stuff. But oh, it's just, we're just shape. a very, yes, the oh, shape. Yeah. We love our shape. <laughs> yes. So we love to put our shape on t-shirts and souvenirs and all kinds of stuff. And <laughs> Tara's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I wonder like how many items that you have in your home state of the shape of Wyoming. It's a square. So <laughs> it's like, definitely like, oh, not this is, fun. This is Wyoming. <laughs> right. Like yeah. you can have a Wyoming shirt and it just has a square and it says home and people are like, they probably have yeah. them though. Like, oh, there is stuff, but it's very boring. But they do put a buffalo in it. So that's another oh, okay. thing, like how we came up with our business name. Her business by herself was Blue Dog. And I wanted to incorporate Wyoming in there somewhere. And so that's where the buffalo came from. So blue came from there and then buffalo came from. Oh, nice. Her heritage, yes. 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 And we added mercantile. I love it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone, um, we're going to go ahead and drop their information <laughs> down below so that you can come visit their store or shop online um, and check out their beautiful Instagram <laughs> photos. So um, thank you again for letting us come in. Yes, and thanks thank for you. playing this. And unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, we didn't see you dancing, but um, maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring sure. some we'll bring some cowboys with us. Oh, no. <laughs> one of our events. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>
Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time, that's all y'all.